Hello and welcome back to You Are My Borough, myself, Dom Shaw and Scott Wilson, both from the Northern Echo. And we're looking ahead to Bishop Auckland, Bolton Wanderers, the start of Borough's domestic pre-season campaign. You're there on Saturday, Scott. Looking forward to it? I am. I am, actually. Last Sunday, uh, I don't want to brag right from the start, but I was in Berlin's Olympia Stadion watching uh, England take on Spain. And on Saturday, I will be in Bishop Auckland's Heritage Park watching Borough take on Bolton. If there's any fans out there who have done the same double, I'd love to know. I'd love to know who you are. But it's uh, it's quite a double header, that, isn't it? Well, I'm, I'm not saying there's a pecking order on the Northern Echo Sports Test, but while you were in Berlin for the Euro final last week, I was at Gateshead for Gateshead Sunderland and their yeah. pre-season opener. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm back there next Wednesday for Borough's game at the, <laughs> I was uh, say. Gateshead the National Stadium. At least you know how to get in, where to park. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we could go on a story here about the grounds we've been locked in in pre-season oh, games. Me, pre-season games, yeah. That, that's a, that's a bit all by itself, that isn't it? Um, Bishop, then we'll, we'll we'll get to that, but we're just going to kind of run through a few news lines first because a couple of bits and bobs have, have happened this week since Borough returned from Portugal last weekend. They've played a game first of all. They, they played Vitoria last weekend last Saturday. We haven't spoken on on this forum since then. Borough lost two 0 Um. But I mean, no, obviously, no concerns at the result. I think kind of a few things to point out here is um, finished fifth last season in the Portugal yeah. top tier, so they're a decent, they're a decent outfit anyway. But they were ahead in their pre-season preparations because they've got European qualifying that might well be in the next week. Um, so anyway, the, the, um, but for Borough, it was obviously their first game of the summer. Carrick was pleased to get minutes in the legs, uh, youngsters and new signings involved there. Um, since we've come back, Emmanuel Latte Lath, bit of speculation. We'll, we'll bring you the latest on that. And Jamie Jones has left to join Salford, which came as a bit of a surprise, really, because he was a free agent um, and he's talked about wanting to go and play games, uh, which might be difficult because we'll, we'll get to that. Matty Young from Sunderland's joined as well, incredibly highly rated. Um, but there was an expectation at Borough that he, 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 he was going to sign a new contract this summer. Hence his involvement in Portugal last week and travelling with the squad to go to Portugal. So slightly surprised developments this week. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it was a surprise. I think it was a surprise to us. I think it was a surprise to Borough more pertinently. Um, I mean, you know, a third choice keeper going doesn't make that much difference. But I think actually it's it's a bit of a headache for Borough because. A third choice keeper is often a difficult position to fill. I know when we we ran the kind of reports and everything on on our website last night, and 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 we're saying on on Twitter, you know, X, whatever you want to call it, will this mean Borough having to go back into the market now for a keeper? And and straight away people are saying, you know, what on earth are you want about? There's, we've kind of got goalkeepers, more goalkeepers than we know what to do with. And and to a certain extent, that's true for Borough because they do. They've obviously got Senny Dieng. They've got who who will start next season as number one. They've then got Solbrin, Zach Hemming, and Tom Glover. But I think, as I said on a reply to a couple of people on there, I can't see any of those three either wanting to be or or benefiting from being a number three. If Bryn or Hemming are number three next season and not even in a match day squad, then that has the potential to massively stunt their development at a key stage of it. Tom Glover's an, an, an international goalkeeper who'll be wanting to make the next World Cup squad. Well, clearly he's not going to be in any way, shape or form satisfied with being a number three keeper, not even playing, um, not even sitting on the bench. So, you know, number three keepers tend to be Jamie Jones-esque, don't they? Veterans coming towards the end of their career. It's probably a decent little way into, into coaching. You know, you're almost a training ground keeper and that's your job, isn't it? unless major injuries happen. So I think Borough will have to go out and, and recruit a specialist number three now and, and and then obviously still decide on on who's going to be their number two out of Breen, Hemming and and um, Glover. But I don't think it's, it's as easy for them as just saying, well, we'll just make one of them our number three then. I'm not sure that's going to work, do you? No, absolutely not. I mean, Glover... Glover, really, let, let's be honest, it isn't going to be satisfied being a number two moving yeah. forward long term because of his international ambitions, like you say there. So he's not going to be a number three. And Sol Brin and Zach Hemming have, have both returned from extremely impressive loans, several extremely impressive loans. Now, with both Brin and Hemming, 
or, or certainly with one of them, you could make them number two and say, look, you know, a year or two of this, they're, they're both only 24, both still got two years left. A, a, a year or two as deputy with a, with a path to the first team. But like you say, after, after, after years of, of impressing, Bryn's gone League Two, League One, uh, Hemming has gone through the ranks in Scotland. It, it'd be a backward step now for, for either of those to not be involved at all or, or to basically be the travelling reserve. Uh, we, we've talked about the keeper situation several times on here over the summer, haven't we? The, I think the reality is you're looking at Dieng as number one and, and then you've got a decision to make on one of the three. And then the other two probably move them on. Certainly, yeah. in, if it's not Glover, then you would expect Glover to move on. If it's not it, whoever it is out of Bryn and Hemming, then clearly you've got a decision to make. Do, do we do we move them on or do we send them out on loan again? But how how many times can you send the keeper out on loan? At some stage, you need to say to them, don't you? Go, go and crack on with your career now. You, you'd, put a, you'd put a sell-on clause in, as they have with other players like Nathan Wood, for example, recently. Who, who moved on, and you bring you bring kind of a specialist number three in if there's such a thing. Jo the, where, where there's a headache is Jones was Jones was ideal for that, wasn't he? And you can understand him saying he wants to go and play games or certainly be involved. Um, but I do wonder whether he's and, and, and nothing against him here, but I do wonder whether he's going to be number one there because Matty Young from Sunderland, seventeen year old, joined as well. And for kind of Borough fans who aren't aware of his background, well. He was out on loan at Darlington last season and, and earned rave reviews. Um, and I mean, without building up too much, Craig Stoddart, who covers him for the Echo, was talking about Casper Schmeichel and Jordan Pickford, wasn't he, when he was on loan at Darlow and, uh, and comparing him there. Um, Sunderland have hugely high hopes for him. So I wouldn't expect Young to be going out on loan and to be a deputy somewhere. I, I would think he'll be going to play. Yeah, which is which is an interesting dynamic because obviously the, the the kind of interview that Jamie Jones gave to the Salford website was very much all about um I've done this to try and play football. You know, I was number three last season, but 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 you know, I want one last crack at it. And I and I guess that's understandable, but like you said, it, it does it I think it does cause an issue for Borough because I guess you could have, you know, you your number three can be a real reserve keeper, as in you know, a keeper who's kind of just dipping his toes out of the under 21s on the understanding that really you're never ever going to play him. But obviously, you're only one serious injury to Senny Dieng away from your number three being a number two who does have to sit on the bench every week. So it's getting that balance between a keeper who almost certainly isn't going to play, but actually, once in a blue moon in an emergency, might have to start. And and that, that's not, an, yeah, not necessarily an easy. Um, an easy riddle to solve, but I'm with you. I, I don't think any of the existing ones tick that box. Let's move on then. Um, Emmanuel Latte Lath this week was 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 linked, or there was said to be interest from Monaco. Um, I, I think a couple of things on this. First things first. Kind of all the indications on and off the record at the start of this summer was that it's inevitable that there'll be links this summer because the way Latte Lath finished last season, uh, when you're a striker in form in the championship, he earned a first international call-up. Um, speculation was going to be inevitable. At the start of the summer, we sat down with Kieran Scott, didn't we? And, and he couldn't have been any clearer in setting out Borough's stance and desperation to keep hold of Latte Lath, Rav Vandenberg, Hayden Hackney, any of the other kind of star assets this summer. Um well, absolutely nothing's changed on that front. As the, 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 despite the speculation, that there's been no contact. There's been no, or, or there's been no bids, should I say? Um, but if any bids do land, it would take mega, mega, mega money to tempt Borough into even entertaining anything, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's you know that's the impression, the very strong impression you've got from anyone we speak to at Borough all the way through is look, you know, we we expect there to be some transfer tittle tattle. We expect there to be rumours. We expect our players to get linked. We're probably going to get an odd phone call, but we want to keep these players and it's going to take something absolutely, you know, completely out the ordinary for us to to, to shift that stance. Um, and, and that's a really good position for Borough to be in, isn't it? You know what I mean? It, it's their call on this. Uh, I, I don't see any of the three players mm. agitating for a move. I don't see them banging the door down, trying to force their way out of Borough. 
um, which would obviously be a dynamic that could change things if that was to happen. Um, and and I think privately, Borough do, do not expect to get the kind of bid that would force their hand for any of those three players this summer. Um, now, that's not to say it's, it's impossible that it happens because come the end of the transfer window, if clubs are scrambling around, strange things can happen. But... Um, but all things being equal, I think Borough are pretty confident that those three players w- will will um, will still be Borough players come the end of the window, and are absolutely confident that if they're not, it'll be because there was just a bid that was kind of so out of the ordinary, so ridiculous that they just could not turn it down. And and I think like obviously the key thing to stress here is is Glatilat's happy, settled. Yeah. Uh, his agents come out a couple of times. I think this week he was he was quoted. Um, by uh, Baropolis on 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 X saying that Latte Laugh's happy at Borough, which is clearly a, a, a major contributing factor when you haven't got a player who's agitating. And, and I think there's an understanding that um of where Latte Laugh's come from really in the last in the last year. Although although Borough signed him from Atlanta, he'd been playing in the Swiss League. His his goal scoring record, it was nothing to get excited about when he signed last summer, but clearly Borough have seen something in him and and there'd be a hope that he'd kind of reward that faith or, or you know, show his, show his appreciation for that faith. I know football doesn't work like mm-hmm. that, but clearly th- th- there's a real feeling of calm and that and the, there's nothing to worry about on that front. Yeah, I think, you know, for all, that, for all that we talk about how well he did at the end of last season, and he undoubtedly did, I think he's still got to prove that he can do it over a full championship season and... and you know, stay fit, stay sharp, continue to score goals week in, week out, because, you know, he had a sensational, what, month and a half, two months probably. Um, But it had been a little bit mixed before that. Admittedly, a lot of that was down to the fact that he'd been getting injured. Um, So, you know, while while Lath will will argue that he's earned the right to be linked with these kind of, you know, potential moves and everything, and, and, and to a certain degree he has, I think there's also an element where, well, okay, you know, let's actually see you go out and prove it over the course of a whole championship season. And if come this time next summer, you finish as the top scorer in the championship, then maybe you are the next Victor Jokerez and you go to sport and a sport in Lisbon or whatever, and and that's all fine and Borough will make the money and, and everyone's a winner in that scenario. But, you know, I think I'm very excited about what Latalath could do for Borough this season. But I'm, I'm, I don't think we're yet at the point where we're going into it saying, well, he's absolutely nailed on to finish this season with 25, 30 goals. He needs to show it over a prolonged period of time and he needs to show it and stay fit. And, and, and if he does, if, if he does finish the season as championship stop scorer with 25, 30 goals, even 20 goals, you'd sit here now and say, well, Borough have got a good chance of finishing the season with promotion because there's a yeah. good balance to the squad. And if you've got a striker scoring that many goals with other players who are inevitably going to chip in as well, you'd be sitting here now saying, yeah, but you, 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 you'd fancy Borough's chances. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah, completely agree. Because because that, um, you know, that's been the kind of missing piece in the jigsaw for most of the time that Borough have been in the championship, hasn't it? You know, um, I mean, the fact that, that um, Bernie Slavin's record stood for so long before it was finally broken kind of says it all that, you know, for all that Borough have been close at times, they've obviously made playoffs. They've not had that championship leading scorer type player. Um, Latalath could be that. Uh, Riley McGree this week, new contract agreed, four-year four year deal to, to, to get... To the first friendly of the summer, the first domestic friendly of the summer, to have four signings in, the head coach um, signing a new contract and the key player in Riley McGree signing a new contract. It just all helps to build about this kind of feel of everything being in order, doesn't it? The feel good factor, the positivity. And the McGree one was crucial, wasn't it? Because the longer it didn't go on, the more it would have become an issue. Mm. Michael Carrick would have undoubtedly been asked about it tomorrow after the game, had he, had he not signed this week, it would have been one of those issues that just keeps coming up, doesn't it? it, it it's just another box ticked. Yeah, and, a, and an important player, isn't he? You know, we know how much Michael Carrick rates him. Um, there's going to be a battle for places in those attacking oh. midfield roles for Borough this season. Massively, obviously, you know, Finazaz came in last season and did his stuff. Bergzog's obviously come in. Aidan Morris, we're not quite sure how high up the pitch he's going to play yet, but he's going to be in and around that mix. So, um, you know, Riley McGree is going to face a battle just to get in this team, but he is, 
you know, he has been a key player for Middlesbrough since he arrived. Michael Carrick clearly rates him and likes him. Um, and, 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 and I think you're right. It just adds to this sense of, A, everything being in order, everything being structured, there being plans in place. You know, how many times in the past have we been mourned the fact that Borough players have run out of their contracts or it's been a mad scramble in the last six months? Well, the club are clearly not going to get themselves into those kind of situations anymore. So, so that's positive. But then also the fact that McGree, you know, I, I'm sure there has been interest. I'm sure his agent has been, um, you know, aware of interest, aware of potential offers, aware of places where McGree could have gone to. So I think the fact that he said, OK, four years, yeah, let's get it done. Let's, I'm staying at Middlesbrough. It's a big vote of confidence in, in Michael Carrick and what he's trying to do it, yeah? Um, and, and as you say, I think it shows that what Borough are doing off the pitch is undoubtedly um, in a far better state now than, than was the case, what, five years ago, ten years ago, or certainly under certain other previous bosses who have, um, where, where I, I, you know, and, and other backroom kind of um, structures at Borough where it just hasn't felt as organised as it clearly is at the minute under... Kieran Scott and, and the rest of them there are Rockley. And, and it's a it's an it's an interesting and a big season now for McGree, isn't it? Because when 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 he's fully fit and it's best, he's, he's he's shown that he's a match winner, hasn't he? I mean, the goal of Birmingham this season, yeah. most recent season to secure that one 0 win, and he, and he's he's scored a lot of good goals, but big goals as well, important goals at crucial times. Um, but he did miss a bulk of last season through injury. Off the top of my head, maybe started 14 games. Now, when you look at kind of the makeup of that forward line now, Azaz played a lot of his football last season off the left. Bergzog's come in, and, and I've heard a few times now that the indications are that he can be really effective off the left. I know Azaz can play 10. Alex Gilbert had a good end to last season. Again, suggestions are that he's started pre-season or returned for pre-season really impressively. Um, so... It shows that Borough in a good place, that we talk about how important McGree is, and yet you're looking at it thinking that there's no guarantee that he's a nailed-on starter. No, you, you couldn't put your kind of hand on your heart now and say, well, he will definitely start the first game of the season in, what, three weeks' time, can you? I don't think we're there with him yet, no. Um, and that's a battle he's going to have to have now. And, and obviously the pre-season matches that were co are coming up will play a part of that. What Michael Carrick seeing day in, day out on the training ground will obviously, you would imagine, play a much bigger part in that. But... Um, but all of that's going to come together for, for some, you know, some tricky decisions that Michael Carrick's going to have to make. And, and it's interesting because you run through all of that and and that's kind of Borough's options on the left-hand side, even though Sam Greenwood obviously wasn't retained. You flip it to the right-hand side of the pitch. You've got Isaiah Jones, but there's a lot of uncertainty at the minute about exactly where Marcus Force is at. He obviously didn't go to Portugal, did he? So, you know, he, he, he's not there yet in terms of his come back from injury. So quite where he's at, we'll have to see. Um, but it, it doesn't feel like all of a sudden there's the options on the right for Borough, as as they maybe have now on the left with McGree, a cast iron certainty. It, suddenly, you know, you were looking at it at the start of the summer thinking, well, if Sam Greenwood goes, they'll surely have to buy someone to play on the left. Now you look at it and thinking, well, actually, maybe it's the left that's the stronger part of it. And it's the right hand side that, that might need a bit of um, attention. Yeah, which will be interesting to see how that plays out over the remaining weeks of the summer. Because we're in a position now, really, where I suspect if the season started tomorrow, Michael Carrick and the recruitment team would be delighted with the makeup of the squad. But yeah, that that's not to say that the work's finished by any means. That they do still, which we've talked about previously, have eyes on a centre forward that they'll, that they'll do if they can this summer. But I think kind of similar to January, really, in that the, 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 the they'd want their top target. They'd want or strike that they really want. And if they don't get that centre forward, then then they'd happily go into the season with the options they've currently got. You've got Latte Lath, you've got Coburn, another one who we're told is in the start of pre-season really well. Bergzog can play there. I know there's talk of Force can play there as well, but I, I just think we're in a position where Carrick's been in two years now and, and we've rarely seen Marcus Force as a centre forward. You see him more as a right midfielder. Um so we'll see we'll see how that progresses over the course of the remaining weeks of the summer transfer window. Bishop then Bolton Wanderers on Saturday. What are you most looking forward to? Intrigued by? Um, what am I most looking forward to? Is I think there's a massive Sainsbury's next to Bishop's Ground, so I'm probably nipping <laughs> out. Uh, and yeah, there's a definitely a McDonald's, so I'll probably get a bit of a 
get a bit of shopping done if I need it. Uh, nah, listen, it's always um, it's always good to go and see a game, isn't it? You know, we talk about it. I, I think I'm looking forward to seeing if any of the new signings are playing. Yeah. Um, you know, what's Berg's? I suspect Berg's will probably play. Morris, you know, given obviously the way that he came in and the fact that he, he he's had the you know the break and the MLS stuff. Will he play? I don't know. We'll have to see that. But I'd be surprised if Bergsall didn't. So it'll be interesting to see them. Um, I'm interested to see Corburn. You touched on him there. You know, how fit is he looking? Hackney as well, who obviously we haven't seen for a good while. Is he kind of, you know, right back, ready to go, which all the suggestions are that he is. Um, so I think there'll be plenty to look out for. And like you say, it's just nice to uh, to kind of get the ball rolling and, and hopefully we'll have a chance to have a bit of a chat with Carrick after the game and 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 um, raise a couple of issues there and and see who's around and who isn't and and kind of how things have been going so far. So, um, so yeah, it, it should be a it should be a decent weekend. And then and then as I say, it's you at Gateshead next week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Back to Gateshead. Well, Sunderland were there last week. They split their squad over two games. They played at Shields first. They lost. They lost at Gateshead. Gateshead were really good. I saw them Gateshead a couple of times last summer. Um, they played Sunderland and Newcastle, and they were really good yeah. both both times. Um, yeah, it'll be a, that'll be a good yeah. test for it. But it's interesting. Well, obviously, the Borough, are obviously, you know, we talk about it being a bishop, and it is, but they're obviously playing Bolton, aren't they? It's not like they're playing bishops. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how strong Bolton go as well, because obviously they just missed out on winning promotion in the in the in the League One playoffs last season. So, um, you know, it's it's got the potential to be an interesting afternoon, I think. And I, you know, there'll be a decent crowd down there, won't they? Just with yeah. it being the first one. People are being starved of, of of that kind of fix. Three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, the sun's going to be shining. Hopefully, so um, so yeah, it should be canny. Who, who are the players who Who are the players who need a big a big preseason then, or, or, or will be desperate to kind of catch the eye? I mentioned Gilbert there. You would think that he's going to be itching to build on his impressive end to last season. Coburn clearly fueled by all the frustration of the second half of last season because. We forget that when he got injured, he he was, and I know Latte Latte had injuries, but Coburn was kind of establishing himself at the time as the, as the first choice centre forward, wasn't he? Before yeah. his injuries set him back. So they're two players. And the other one, and I, and I know there's question marks over Darrell Lenahan, for example, at centre half, but that battle for places at centre half mm -hmm. is, is, is fascinating, isn't it? Because when they're all fit, you've got four central defenders who, at the best, would walk into most, if not all, championship defences. Yeah, and I think you know I, I don't think we're at this we're going to be at the stage in preseason yet where we can start to read into who starts, who comes on at half time. Who yeah, but we have a good goal. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> that's the guessing game, isn't it? Um, I think I think Saturday will be too early for that. I think yeah. Saturday's yeah. team will be just dictated by who's had the most minutes in their legs, anyone who's missed an odd session here and there. You know, I, I think we'll see that. Um, but as as preseason progresses, then. Making up Michael Carrick's mind about who is his first two centre halves is going to be one of the really interesting dynamics. And um, I also think it's—I know I mentioned him before. I think it's quite a big one for Hackney, yeah. Because yeah. you know, Aidan Morris has come in with with a big reputation, a lot of excitement around that signing. Um, Johnny Owson has obviously signed his new deal. He's still there. Dan Barlas is still there. It feels like he's probably number four at the minute, but but not necessarily. So, you know, Hackney's always been, or I say always been seen, for the last year, year and a half, Hackney's been Borough's emerging superstar, hasn't he? He's been the one that, um, you know, big teams are watching, local lad, could be anything, you know, looks like he's got an exceptional career ahead of him. All of that still rings true, but Rob Vandenberg is almost now the blue-eyed boy and the one that, that that clubs might be going for in the future, if you like. And Hackney's got, you know, really strong midfield competition potentially in the shape of Morris. So I think it's a big pre-season for him as well. Just, and, and obviously he's not played any football since when was it? About February. So just in terms of fitness and sharpness and everything, it's a big, big period for him. But I also think just in terms of kind of re-establishing himself in in the, the the borough kind of squad and where he stands in it and, and as the main man as the main man yeah 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 I think um I think it's important for him Let, let's have a go then before we wrap up you said that uh, kind of it's impossible at this stage to guess what what would be if, if if we're sitting here now what three four weeks out before any of the preseason games that we've seen having a punt at what what the starting eleven would be on the first day of the season 
against okay. Swansea. So, so I'll, I'll have a go. I, I go. Are we, are we, we're, we're obviously assuming that everyone's fit, everyone's available. Who, who we know. So, like, for example, like, yeah, yeah. We're both very unlikely to be fit. But, but okay. yeah, so who's currently available? And obviously, not withstanding any further signing. So, I, yeah. I've got Dieng, Erling, Vandenberg, Clark, Engel. As things stand, although obviously there's the there's the uncertainty at left back in that ongoing situation. Hackney and Housen, I think it'd be my two. Jones, Azaz, McGree, Latte, Laugh. I think, but then we haven't seen but I haven't seen Berg's all play, but that'd be mm. my that'd be my punt now. That feels like that feels like where things are most likely to be at at the minute, don't they? I think I think you're right in that in that given the way he ended last season. Clark probably feels like he'd get the nod ahead of Fry and Lenahan. Uh, I think Ayling's nailed on, Dieng's nailed on, Van den Berg's nailed on, Engel probably, Engel. although like you say, you know, if Giles comes in or another left back mm. comes in, that's probably an area that could change between now and then. Um, feels like House and Hackney, although it wouldn't surprise me if Morris, if he if he's if he's ready to go and plays a full part in pre-season, which you know it sounds like he's going to, then yeah, that, that's an interesting one. I think Jones mm. starts. Zaz seems like he's, he's, he's Burr's kind of one that has been earmarked for the number 10 slot, especially initially. Um, and then, yeah, McGree ahead of, what, Bergzorg ahead of Gilbert. Mm. Latalath clearly starts. So, yeah, I, I'd, I'd, I'd ruin with that definitely at the moment, I think. Where are we? July the 19th. We'll keep getting we'll marked down. More and we'll see yeah. how wrong we are. Yeah, exactly. all predictions. Exactly. We'll, have to do, we'll have to do all predictions before the uh, before. Oh, the we'll be, yeah, we'll be doing yeah. plenty of them. Don't Make we? note of that as well. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks for watching. We'll be back early next week when we look back on that Bishop friendly and look ahead to the Gator game. Uh, if you're there this weekend, then uh, give Scott a shout because he's there for us. Oh, um, hello. Yeah. At the uh, the joints any, of any uh, bags of Haribo or anything like that, gratefully received. <laughs> well, now you know there's a Sainsbury's next door. You've got no, no excuse. I've got no excuse, have I? Beforehand, I uh, tell you what, look outside there, it's Kansas cider weather, isn't it? But I, I don't know whether that'll last. I don't know whether that'll last tomorrow. If I look at your copy afterwards, then it's absolutely riddled with typos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Do subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. We passed the 1,000 subscribers mark last week, which we were chuffed to bits about. We've been pushing for so. Thanks to everyone who subscribed and and and, and gets in touch with the comments. We really appreciate that as well. We we like the interaction. So please continue doing that. We will do another live Q and A at some point in the next couple of weeks as the season approaches uh, and and the transfer window continues. And if you're listening on your podcast platforms, then then do leave uh, a rating and review on there as well because that would help us enormously as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Enjoy your weekend and enjoy Bishop if you're going along on Saturday. Take care.